So, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to make the connection of this to this, okay? Now, again, if you guys look over there, I have x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. We showed last class period that x minus 1 divides into it. You guys can see it algebraically here, but we also proved it with synthetic division and long division, that it evenly divides, right? Since it evenly divides, it's called a factor, correct? Yeah. Then, from the factored form, we can set the factor equal to 0 to find the 0, correct? Now, how many times x minus 1 divides into x squared minus 3x plus 2 was x minus 2, which we also call a factor because, just like I had, 6 divided, is 3 a factor of 6? Yes, because 3 goes into 6 how many times? 2. So what is 2 also a factor? Yes, so that means the quotient of that is also a factor. So when I tell you or I give you a 0, what that means is I can divide that 0 into this because it's going to evenly divide, right? And then the answer is also going to be a factor of the polynomial, correct? Again, if you give something that's a factor and you divide it into it, the answer is also a factor. Correct? So what we're going to do is we're going to use synthetic division. You could use long division, but why? Synthetic division, 3, 2, negative 19, and 6. All right, I'm not going to talk my way through it as much as I did last class period, um, but I or go as slowly as I did last class period for synthetic division because nobody asked me for questions on their homework, so that I assume that everybody did it and didn't have any issues. So the first thing you're going to do, bring down 3. 3 times 3 is negative 9. 2 plus negative 9 is negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 3 is 21. Negative 19 plus 21 is positive 2. 2 times 3 is negative 6. Remainder 0. We know it has to, right? If it doesn't evenly divide, we know that we did something wrong because the problem says that's a 0. So we know it has to evenly divide, right? Now, this is our other factor. This is how many times this divides into that. So we have to write out what that is. Um, OK. <clears throat> so remember, if that's the 0, we can write it as a factor, right? Because the factors multiply to give us this polynomial. So if here's my 0, that means x plus 3 is the factor. And then this is my other factor. This times this gives me, my poly, gives me my original answer. Again, I'll revert that to what we did last class period. 3 divides into 6 two times. That means 3 times 2 equals 6. This divides into this 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 times. So 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 times x plus 3 is going to give me that. Now, what's the question, though? The question is asking us to find all the zeros. We already know one zero. We need to find the remaining zeros. That one zero is shown right there. We need to find the other zero. So we already know x equals negative 3. That's fine. So what do we need to do? We need to set this equal to 0 and solve. Now, if you guys remember the beginning of the year, we did a focus lesson all concentrated on solving quadratics. Literally, we spent about four weeks solving quadratics. You can solve quadratics by factoring. You can solve quadratics by the quadratic formula. You can solve quadratics by completing the square. These will all be acceptable methods to do this. But you have to make sure you guys are comfortable and can solve quadratics, because you all will be expected to factor. It's a part of this problem. That's why we spent that time doing, practicing that. So now we have to see if this is factorable. So I break it up into 3x and x. And then I see what two numbers I need to multiply to give me 2, add to give me negative 6. So I think I got it, negative 2 and negative 1. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do something. Sorry about that. Um, that's the factored form. If it wasn't factorable, you could have completed the square, or I would prefer using quadratic formula. But that is factorable. 
And therefore, I set them equal to 0. 3x minus 1 equals 0. And x minus 2 equals 0. So therefore, x equals 1 third and x equals 2. So I have how many zeros? 3. What is my degree? 3. So I know at least I'm on the right path with that. The one thing I forgot to mention to you, which I forgot to do, was we forgot to check the rational zeros. So did everybody at least get this written down? Because what I want you guys to do on your problem, this is what I want you guys to do first. I want you guys to do the, uh, the rational zero test. So the rational zero test would be the factors of 6, which are 6, 3, 2, 1, all over, plus or minus, the factors of 3, which are 3 and 1. So what you do, once you find the factors, plus or minus, of your constant over your leading coefficients, is you just write out every single possible combination. So you do 6 over 3, comma, plus or minus 6 over 1, comma, plus or minus 3 over 3, comma, plus or minus 3 over 1, comma, plus or minus 2 over 3, comma, plus or minus 2 over 1, comma, plus or minus 1 over 3, comma, plus or minus 1 over 1. Now, you guys might say, Mr. McGordon, that's a lot of work. Well, once you guys kind of get used to this, you'll start to see that a lot of these start to simplify. 6 over 1 is just 6. And then you can do plus or minus 6 over 3 is 2, comma, plus or minus, actually we have 3, 3 over 1. Then you have 3 over 3 is 1. That was 2 as well, so that was a duplicate. And then we have, that's 1 over 1, so that's 1. That's a duplicate. Then we have plus or minus 2 thirds and plus or minus 1 third. Now, these are all real zeros. These are all real numbers, real rational numbers. Yes? Do they have to do anything to the duplicate? I mean, it's just duplicate. It's like saying 2 twice. So it's not, you know. And this is just giving you the possible rational zeros. Now, let's double check. Are all of my solutions, all these rational zeros, a part of this number. It's not like I have 5 as an answer, do I? Yeah. No. Like, so is negative 3 in that list? Yes, negative 3. Is one, positive 1 third a part of that list? Yes, positive 1 third. What about positive 2? Yes, right? So therefore, you get, it's a good way to kind of double check if you did something wrong, because if you have like 19 as an answer, obviously it's not in the rational zero, zero so you obviously there's something wrong with what you did. Okay. So we'll do this first on the next example. Um, and then we'll go through the same process. Although I did erase 